my gosh. Off to okay, great start. Great alive, start. But let me double check. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, my goodness. If you guys can hear us and see us, let us know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Drop an F in the chat for our brain cells, please. <laughs> Drop a hello, a smile, something, because we need it. <laughs> <laughs> also, oh, if you read the book and can explain oh it real gosh, quick, is a... <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> Let me get it together. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the October live show for the Krusty Club book club today we're going to be talking about all's well by mona awad um which is a book about a lot of things (laughs) a lot it's about a lot but before we get into talking about that i'm just going to quickly do some reminders for november which is this month and then december so in november we are reading tokyo ever after which is a book about this girl who finds out that her dad is like royalty and she goes to Japan to figure out like her family and all of that stuff. It's really interesting from what I've heard. And I'm really excited because I'm ready to go back into YA contemporary. I need it. (laughs) I need that return, (laughs) that very simple return. Um, And then in December, we are reading She Who Became the Sun, which is a fantasy book. Um, not quite sure what I expect from that book because this year fantasy has been eating me up, not in a good way. So those are our two picks for November and December. If you want to join us, go ahead and follow the bookstagram for the book club, as well as the discord. I have both links down below. And now I'm going to go ahead and let my co-hosts introduce themselves. And then they're also going to tell you what one of maybe like one or two of their favorite books they've read this year is? Oh, <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> Rachel, you go first because you look prepared. <laughs> I'm super prepared. Okay, so I'm Rachel. Uh, my channel is Read with Rachel. Uh, I read basically <laughs> everything. And uh, oh, I also run Feminist AF Book Club, and we are reading one of my favorite books that I read this year, which is Iron Widow by Shira J. Brown. And uh, my other favorite that I read this year was Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. I've seen that one at Barnes and Noble. It looks really nice. Like the cover is really good. good. Actually, it's a Goose Girl retelling, I guess. And I know that two of you have read another goose girl retelling so what is this better is it like horse girl (laughs) (laughs) yes basically yeah actually (laughs) essentially we're moving forward with other animals (laughs) (laughs) next we'll have chicken girl (laughs) okay who's next (laughs) oh okay I'm Kat from Paperback Dreams, and two of my favorite books. I'm here looking at my Goodreads. Wasn't we love to see it? <laughs> You're out here giving me like a fucking exam. <laughs> um, Kat's like, what's a book? <laughs> I don't read. Come on. Um, I loved actor actor Ag Brown, Talia Hibber. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Chanel knows. Hi. And then the Pisces, because who doesn't love oh, some fucking the Pisces? <laughs> We're not gonna talk about the white couch. <laughs> I think we should go into heavy detail about mm-hmm. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Zach, take it away. <laughs> um, I'm Zach from Zach Tries to Read, most famous for not uploading anything substantial in a year and a half. Um, and I've been in a reading slump like this whole year, but I did read most of Dune and I've been enjoying that. Most of Dune. Yes. I've Here's read most of Dune. A book one or <laughs> yeah, just the first book. Okay, yeah, because the first book is so big. There's mm. more than one. Yeah, yeah. apparently it's like a it's like a nineteen book series. Few. Yeah, the time for that. Okay, right. Yeah, I did right. not read most of the series. Let's let's mm-hmm. calm down, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I've been in a reading slump, but I've read like this nineteen. Yeah, book sci-fi. <laughs> Fun fact: I went to see the movie because mm-hmm. my grandma had read it, and my sister wanted to see it, and my girlfriend wanted to see it, so we saw it. And I hadn't finished the book, and I was like, oh, whatever, I'll just finish it up. The movie's only like the first half of the book, so even though yeah. I hadn't finished it, I'd already read all 
up to that point. <laughs> Isn't the movie like so long? Out. Hours long? Dude, it's like three what? hours. Mm-hmm. It's way too long. I was sitting in that theater like any excuse to leave. <laughs> I'm not going to see it. I don't care. I don't even like oh, no, that. So Rachel's interesting. interesting. You don't want to see Timothy Charcuterie or whatever his name is? Not Timothy <laughs> Charcuterie. <laughs> um, I, you know what? When I watched it, it honestly, it made me want to join the boat of anti-Timothy Stan. <laughs> 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 And that was a very strong statement for me to have because I was literally like, are you kidding me? I was there for Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa steals the show. Right. And Zendaya was giving like perfume commercial. I was like, (laughs) (laughs) for like five minutes. You literally (laughs) That's a yeah, it's basically. Like, girl, spit it out. Say what you need to say. (laughs) So we can move on. Okay, so now we're going to go into talking about All's Well. If you've read the book, go ahead and let us know in the comments. Let us know what your rating was, what you thought about it, all of that. Um, yeah, Maybe that was the one could, like, explain it to us also. Yeah, yeah. While people are posting their um, comments, I'm going to try my best <laughs> to give us a summary, a non-spoiler summary as best as I can with this book that I'm holding right here. Okay. (laughs) So All's Well is about a college theater professor who is trying to stage a Shakespeare play called All's Well. Mm -hmm. And she um, has chronic pain. So she kind of has this idea in her mind that doing this is going to help her heal from something that happened to her like years ago that caused her chronic pain issues. And she's like, well, if I do this, then maybe I will feel something again. And that's basically what the book is about. And this woman is very miserable. But, oh, Zach, <laughs> Zach just came to something else. But yeah, that's basically what this book is about. Theater professor. Sorry, my Wi-Fi is like crapping out on me. Oh, no, you're good. Desperation. Yes. Okay, you guys give your ratings and I'll go last. <laughs> oh boy, who wants to go first? I gave it four. Ooh. You gave it two? Oh shit. Oh, okay, wait. Oh, no. Wait, because I gave it five stars. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I knew you were going to give it four, Kat. Yeah, you did. You oh, called it. She texted me like what yesterday and was like, yeah. the main character is kind of a bitch, so I think you'll give it four stars. Yeah, I was like, she is like, <laughs> insufferable. You're gonna like this. I, I guarantee it. it. I like it. What can I say? I love <laughs> a woman who just like fucks people over. It makes yeah. me feel. Oh, so I, said, I just read Bunny and I loved it. Was thinking of picking this up. Honestly, Bunny was also a five star read for me. I loved it so much. I think one thing I've noticed with Mona is whatever she's taking, pass it along. Oh, give sure. it right here. Give it right here because her books are just like the perfect academic torture. So that's that's just what it is. Academic torture and teachers who hate students. So if you love Bunny, you will probably love this book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, and I will say, like, to to my rating, at least, I've mm-hmm. always struggled with dark academia. It's mm-hmm. never been my thing, which I believe this would be considered dark academia, right? Okay. Um, so um, when I heard that was the pick, I was a little, little concerned going in. And so mm-hmm. that's just something to take with a grain of salt anyway. But it's just kind of like one of those things where I feel like there's a good story in here. Mm -hmm. There are things I like, but I feel like it it could be a really great novella stretched Mm -hmm. to a novel. It's just like, okay, I get it, Miranda. You like sex. Cool. (gasps) I got it. If we could like have a plot. Long enough. Part of the better. More. Uh, (laughs) I just found her so insufferable, and (laughs) I wanted bad things to happen to her. So <laughs> that's where I was at. Um, she just was not for me. And uh, no. 
Oh no. my God. Real quick before I say something, um, I totally agree with this. I was like, girl, I don't know what's happening, but I love it. And the thing is, like, I agree with Kat because I really like books with very mean women because I just feel yeah. like if you're like, I hate everyone and I will continue to hate, like, up until the end, this woman is like, mm -mm. <laughs> and I was like, I'm, I'm here for it, but I have no idea what's happening, but I'm here for it. I mean, call me crazy, but I was rooting for her. <laughs> See, she was like, I'm gonna do some shit. I'm gonna fuck people's lives up. And I was like, honestly? See, here, here's yeah. my problem, though. It's it's like, I think I could get behind that, but she doesn't really seem to do most of it intentionally. She yeah. Kind of oh, okay. Accidentally yeah. passes the payoff. If she was, like, full anti-hero and, like, just going insane, I would enjoy it, I think, more. It's That's just fair. Just, fair. Yeah. I would yeah, so, fair, like, like I can't get behind the mean girl vibe because she doesn't like <laughs> plot to be like this bitch. If she, she got something common, you know, she doesn't do that. Yeah. She's just kind of like, oh shit, I accidentally like almost killed this girl. Yeah, honestly, Whoops. when I was like half like, through the book, I what? thought she was planning stuff, so I got really excited. I was like, oh girl, what, what are we doing here? What's I, the think, I think she wasn't. I hmm, I, I think I feel like it was unintentional, but I thought she was planning it. I think the first instance with Brianna was unintentional, mm -hmm. but like eventually I think she just kind of started to um, delude herself into like mm -hmm. not realizing what she was doing. Like when she fucked up the, um, what's the physical therapy. Right. Mark, I, that was the one intentional dude, one. That I was, was the like, one I don't intentional know one. what you're doing, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> which, which can I point out, are we in spoilers? Can I say stuff? Yeah, about? yeah. Oh, by okay. the way, guys, we're, there's not much that's not spoilery. Yeah, can we, can we point out now. the fact we never find out what happens to Mark? Yeah. I, know. I feel huh? like he's I, I feel like he died. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, um, I feel like that's both a positive and negative because like Grace was like, Oh, I was just sick, and then like Ellie's like, Oh, I jinxed her and I healed her, and it's like, but but Mark, what happened yeah. to him? And that's Honestly, kind of I agree with this. I agree with you, Isa, because I thought she was going to, like, I thought Grace was out of here. I don't understand how Grace came back at the Me end. Me neither. I don't get that. I don't get it. I don't, get it. I, don't, I don't get most of it. It was more like things were happening to her or adjacent mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. our main character yeah. rather than her doing them. And I think I would have liked it better if she was actively doing them yeah. and if mm -hmm. she had plotted more things rather than she had even less idea of what was going on than we did so <laughs> that, yeah. that was a struggle for me like, personally i i saw like when she was like i cast a spell on your bath i was like oh she ellie's like partially behind some of this like i knew like instantaneously no. so when it was revealed at the end like i cast a spell and i was like well yeah <laughs> you know what i mean it's like oh was that a reveal? i didn't even realize that was like a mystery Girl! <laughs> it was supposed to be but that's what i'm saying like Oh. <laughs> it's not yeah you're like okay um ellie yeah. was such an interesting character i, I just i kept i kept talking. seeing different paths for the plot to go where she would have more agency and more like decisions to make with this new power and i wanted them to be taken and they just like never did she just kind of things happened and i was like <sighs> i think you're asking for too much that i yeah. think that the book that's about a woman who just absolutely loses it and like fuck some dude over and over again on a stage what what's not to love dude, that, that was that's the better part of the book for me her obsession wait that was the one that was the better part of the book for me was her having great sex with that guy i was very happy for her <laughs> i was rooting for her the whole and, way through and, and calling him the wrong name like, oh she my god <laughs> easy mistake to make they clearly look nothing alike so yeah, yeah. when you started to call him well i was like no i was rooting for you it was a little disappointing we all make mistakes in the heat of passion Jimbo. <laughs> i felt like hugo was so weird from the beginning when he like was introduced she's like he looks past me blah 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 i was like girl the whole room can probably feel your thirst <laughs> Like <laughs> that's, be that's because Mona Wad likes Shakespeare and she wants to write like Shakespeare, so she wrote basically a soliloquy. 
He oh, looks through me, you? but not at me. I <laughs> oh, just undying for his love and tenderness. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, I get it. You, you want to get his pants? Good. Okay. Weren't yeah, you like were passing cute. on pain oh, or no. something? <laughs> I wasn't against oh, it. No. I felt actually, I felt like he was the more most relatable character in the book. <laughs> honestly, he was just trying to put his life back together. Oh, and yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, but here's the thing, Hugo. I'm gonna feel so bad saying this, but Hugo reminds me of those guys like in <laughs> Oh no. Use your words, no. Use like your in words. middle school and high school where like where is my hug? And then like a couple <laughs> years later. <laughs> Like a what? couple years later. <laughs> not the where's my hug, guys. No, Wait, no, but I'm not dead. But you know the ones that are like looking at <laughs> they're like, where's my hug? And then after you come back from college, they like got attractive and they're just weird. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Very you're, like specific. Very right? specific. <laughs> It's like no, literally like the standing emoji, like the st the standing man emoji. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like... <laughs> just walks in and he's like, right, like oh I was like, this man is so weird. Oh, oh, I didn't even pick that up. I have no idea who Victor Hugo Let's is. Let's be clear: any and all references to anything in this book went right over my fucking name because I don't know anything about Shakespeare. So I was just kind of like, well, that's nice. Yeah. I've made it a part of my deep personality. <laughs> Shakespeare and just not. See, I was honestly, what I wanted from this book, because I, I don't really read synopses, so I didn't really mm -hmm. read this one. But when they were like, we want to do Macbeth, I was like, please let them do Macbeth and then shit just starts happening. That's what I wanted. And when they're like, no, we're going to do also, I was like, oh. Well, okay, but that's part of it, though, is that the book is yeah. Macbeth. Because she gives the fucking opening line at the end when she goes on stage when she's like, I don't know, I thought she was high or something. And she gives, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I love the point. drama of the students trying to like get her fired or whatever, like trying to take over the entire. I loved that. I was like, ooh, girl, you better start applying to some new positions. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking tough for you. <laughs> okay yeah that's a good oh. parallel. Oh, yeah okay okay yeah. see I, I, I didn't even think about that one but that's that's good yeah oh that's I that's not real smart about that, that's that's my <laughs> thing with dark academia is i feel like every time like i try to read it everyone i'm like yeah i just didn't really good i didn't even like it and i was like that's because you don't read enough shakespeare you need to read real literature and i'm like calm no, down fam to calm read down. Real literature. <laughs> It's like yeah, okay, I don't. I, think about it, I feel like a lot of dark academia books kind of have that vibe, mm -hmm. and I'm usually like, "This is boring. Let me flip the the page. <laughs> Let's get back to some real talk." I'm only when I read dark academia, I'm only in it for the killing and like the crazy people. Like I'm not mm -hmm. here to. But there wasn't enough of that in this book. So I don't care how this is. You're like, oh, damn. She, she gives a sprinkle of crazy. I I I got what I got. I came for. Like I was. Yeah. I think so she, she gave book... you a crumb, and you gave the meal four stars. I... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, oh, meant to be watched. Oh, I saw this comment too. Yeah, the leg bleeding thing. I honestly thought that was. I, I also thought I was imagining it. I was like, no way is her leg bleeding and this girl is just minding her business, living her life. <laughs> She's just walking around. With <laughs> yeah, and she's like, I don't feel anything. I'm living my best girl. Again, I'm I think that's supposed to be a Shakespeare parallel with the, the the blood on the hand. Like, I keep bleeding, oh, I don't feel it. Oh, I have blood okay. on my hand that it's not there, but I can see it. Like, so, but beyond that, it doesn't make any sense in the story. It like, really make sense. you can't just put like a reference or a parallel to Shakespeare and they'd be like, oh, now it makes sense. Like, no, it's got to make sense in the narrative and as a mm -hmm. parallel or reference. I don't know. My five star is in danger. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking like a four. <laughs> I'm standing no, no. by my four. I feel good about it. Okay. I just, 
I loved my experience reading this book was so fun because I was like, what is going what on? What was okay, but the fact that I mean, I don't know about Zach, but Chanel, Rachel, and I read basically <laughs> this entire book like yesterday. <laughs> I read the second half of it yesterday on audiobook. So. Okay. It only yeah, it was, Kat texted me and she was like, I haven't started. And I was like, girl, I'm on page one. <laughs> I read this thing on three times speed. It only really added to the experience. Did I hear only yeah. every other word? Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> reading it on three times speed was uh, an experience unlike any other it you i don't mm. <laughs> just had a lot did you stuff. did you enjoy the like minute and a half of the audio just going shake it shake it shake it yeah shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. for like a full minute and i was like okay yes i get it you're loose up. okay cool i i i was like is my is my phone broken on <laughs> no it's not she's just saying it over and over i was like who Mona, why? Why? I feel like, okay, what did you guys think about her obsession with Helen and like her constant, like her constant thoughts about her past? You know, like when she was talking about being it, the perfect actress or whatever. Cause I was like, oh. It's like my whole thoughts in the book are kind of this. I like that in theory, her being obsessed with the past and obsessing over this play and this role because it was like her big one before she got hurt. But like, actually like how it's implemented like i don't mm -hmm. feel like she did anything with it because mm -hmm. she just kept being like i'm obsessed with this play and i'm like cool and i'm obsessed with it yeah i i kind of think the same thing i i no, think i think i think that okay okay i can't explain it but i think it's <laughs> <laughs> okay, i don't have an argument to like back it up but like the whole watching her old uh, performance and then like pushing all of this shit onto, what was that kid's name? That Ellie? Like, yeah. Whatever. Ellie. Ellie and Ellie were Ellie. the two Ellie. Ellie. Study. Like all of them, oh, yeah. like giving her the red dress to make her look hot on stage and having mm -hmm. her kiss that one dude. I don't know any names. Like, you know what? <laughs> okay, we're meddling. I like it. We're, <laughs> we're tampering with people's lives. I don't know. Yeah, I... <laughs> I enjoyed her misery a little bit too much. I was like, I love it here. What? Because when she was like watching her old plays, but she was like, I used to be so amazing and happy. I was like, girl, I can feel your misery. When she, when she talked to Brianna, I was like, yeah. yeah. Brianna sucks. Is she a child who probably is just spoiled and doesn't know any better? Maybe. But yeah. like, she sucks. Dude, yeah. Like at the beginning when she was talking about Brianna's parents or whatever and how much power Brianna had. And she's like, she always gets the lead, whatever. It reminded me just of like the teachers who you know that they're just so miserable. The ones who are like, because I failed, I'm going to teach this thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Like, she's just that teacher, and it's just so interesting to watch her be like, you're mediocre. You're only here because your hair is nice. You can't act. Like, <laughs> when she was talking about that one guy, <laughs> and she was like, the only thing that keeps him here is his hair and his, his hair. hair. Yeah. I was like, girl. <laughs> I was like, okay. Oh, hey. You tell him. Oh, my God. I was like, she ate him up. <laughs> like, that, that was a good scene. I did like that scene of her yeah. just, like, inside her head taking everyone to task. Yeah, I just loved that because, like, also, once she starts, like, once she's better and she's like, mm, I liked how you could clearly see her in her head, like, acting out, like, yeah, reasonable, like, when, like, when she was in the um, dean's office with Brianna and her parents, and like, all the mm. accusations were flying, and she was just like, mm hmm, mm hmm. I was like, <laughs> that was my favorite, that was my favorite scene beyond her getting great sex with Hugo. Mm -hmm. I loved how she was just sitting there like, wow, this is kind of ridiculous. I was nervous for her and she was less nervous than I was. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> she was like, this is going great. I was like, hey. I was like, man, the worker just like whipped out a thong that belongs to me. <laughs> you losing your mind. <laughs> there was never a moment where she was like, oh no, what do I do now? She was like, I'm just going to go with it. This is fine, like, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can, can, we, can we talk about the fact that the 
um is it phoebe uh whatever is sitting there watching in the theater <laughs> like <laughs> bro what <laughs> yeah we just like kind of glossed over that <laughs> oh you were watching the top sex mm, good <laughs> <laughs> I just like I'm just imagining like you know like they're doing all the stage she's like behind the seat in the theater she's like <laughs> yeah oh damn that was good <laughs> like <laughs> like they rip off her underwear and throw it in the corner and she's just like oh hell yeah she's like <laughs> she's like crawling between the seats just, like <laughs> with his one hand out from behind a prop and she's like sliding listen <laughs> that actually makes sense because they were looking they said they looked everywhere for the underwear and even mm. stopped and I know, it was again <laughs> while looking for the underwear it was already gone she had taken it and ran out of there like i got proof i'm out <laughs> She's like, gotta go. She's got some like <laughs> James Bond secrets, secret spy abilities to sneak out of the theater without the door sounding or making any light. <laughs> she just morphed through the wall, I guess. <laughs> she puts an eraser at the door so it doesn't shut. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of the whiteboard erasers. She's like, slow. <laughs> She's like very slowly taking it out. Oh my God. I thought it was so funny while I was reading this because she just reminds me of the type of professor that shows up to class like half an hour late with an iced coffee and then it's like all right well i forgot to charge my laptop class is canceled <laughs> <laughs> like she just reminds me of that type of professor and so that's why like even though she was just so miserable and mean i was like i just know that i would have a good time in this class yeah <laughs> i think my favorite college story i ever heard was someone said their professor brought a bottle of like of a uh, dayquil and was mm -hmm. like drank like a bunch of it and was like so when I my vision is too blurred to read we're gonna stop having class <laughs> <laughs> it was like 16 minutes <laughs> oh, Dog. Dog. <He's> yelling <laughs> wants to be on camera she's a star <laughs> right right oh my god yeah. yeah I do think this is a really good book to read in one sitting because I feel like if I had taken my time throughout the month to read it I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it as much because part of the experience is reading it all at once and being like, what did I just read? <laughs> like, I just need no time to process. <laughs> Let me just yeah. read it and read. Oh, yeah. It's a it's a vibes only book. Mm -hmm. Vibes only. Exactly. I yeah. think I might exactly. have given this a better rating if I wasn't reading the whole time and comparing it to A Lesson in Vengeance <laughs> by Victoria Lee. Mm -hmm. That had like a similar thing going on where the main character is has kind of lost it and you're finding out along the way that a lot of the things that she believes are not actually true. So I think that because I compared it the whole time, yeah, that was part of the reason it didn't get a better rating from me. I might have given it a three had I not thought A Lesson in Vengeance did the same thing sort of, but better. Scandal. Interesting. I have not read that book, but I do own it. And it's funny because I recently heard someone <laughs> talk in great detail about how much they did not enjoy that book. I only heard people say bad things about that book. Right. So, Pat, you'd like so, it. I would like it. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, well, Rachel's about to pull up Miranda. They're about to mysteriously disappear with a man. <laughs> It's not like the best book ever, but I think that if you're looking for the things that were supposed to be done in, in this book all as well, but done better, I think that's that's a good example of that. I think that book was great, but I can understand why other people don't like it. I think that's like good dark academia, but I, I don't really think it was because it didn't follow through, I, I thought, on some of the things that I thought were going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I was I was interested like it in a book like this at least ones I've read like read the past or like movies I've seen when they get this like weird power and they're like using it there's like usually like a twist at some point yeah and I was waiting for that where she like revisits the three men and they're like oh if you want to like undo this because you feel bad now you got to like do this and maybe she has to like work with Brianna and like mm -hmm. maybe be the mark for Brianna and understand like mm -hmm. how frustrating it was for him and that would have been like an interesting kind of like flip of uh roles but mm -hmm. they didn't do that i thought like at the end after everyone's magically cured and the show ends and the three yeah, everyone's <laughs> magically cured. you didn't like your play i thought that all of her pain was gonna come rushing back and it yeah. does 
What the hell? I don't know. I don't. That's what I'm so confused. I thought when I got to the last page and I was reading it, I was like, "Where's the rest of the like?" Yeah, no. it just feels like it's not finished. like finished. Yeah. yeah, man, my five stars in danger. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mona took such a creative way of ending a book in a way that makes you feel like it's not finished she's so creative see i will say my favorite parts <laughs> of the book were I, probably the scenes with the three men because oh. i enjoy that like you don't know what's real reality warping yeah. Yeah. like when she when she goes down the staircase and the staircase like to the bottom floor of the pub and it gets longer and starts like a spiral staircase down it's like okay yeah, yeah if this was more of this i would love this book yeah. I didn't get enough of that. I just got a lot of like, we on bone. <laughs> I think my favorite scenes were like just hearing how much she, anytime she was talking about how much she hated anyone in her head. <laughs> like that. And then I also really liked her interactions with Hugo because I think that like, their, their interactions were just so weird. Oh, like, so weird. I love it. Was it. So I, weird. And I was like, I'm kind of. I feel like if it. the husband had left her, it would make more sense of why she keeps thinking it's him. Because she would still be like after him. That to me, that was a weird choice to have her leave him, but also she's like obsessed with him still and like mistaking Hugo for Paul and like. Uh. Mm, I think like well, I feel like I thought he left her, but since he mm -hmm. didn't, yeah, he didn't, and she left him. I feel like that probably is because the entire time she was talking about chronic, um, chronic pain and how like. You don't want to say too much. You don't want to always be like, oh, I'm in pain because then people think that you're like a burden. Mm -hmm. Because the, the discussions in here about like ableism or like just people mm -hmm. being like, I don't want to deal with you because you're not, you know, like not, not in pain. They're like, how are you? But you have to like figure out, well, you already know because I have the same answer every single time. So yeah. I thought that would have been like a reason for why she would leave him. Like the constant like, how are you feeling? Like people in this book just constantly being like, well, you're imagining it or like you're not really in pain or when she'd be like, oh, it's my leg versus it's my back and kind of like having to keep up with that because she felt like she was lying, even though she was in pain all the time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I feel like That's that awesome. was when she bit. starts to like ruin everyone's life. I was like, hell yeah, because they suck. Right. I everyone, including Chris, they deserved it a little bit. Great they deserved it. and everything, but I just don't. I don't know. Like, I, I did not. If that was me, I'd be like, yeah, you can take that and shove it up. Yeah, but like, take out like Phoebe. No one likes Phoebe. I wanted to see, I wanted to see her go down. She never did. <laughs> she sucks. Yeah. I was disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> the one person I wanted to see suffer because, like, <laughs> Rihanna, she's she's shitty, but she's a kid. Kids are shitty. Yeah. Uh, but like Phoebe's a full grown adult that's insufferable. Take her out. Yeah, that, yeah, that's how I felt too. With the kids, I was like, oh, it's kind of weird. But with like Grace, I felt and Mark, I I felt like Grace and Mark deserved it. And then her um her what was that guy? He was like a spine therapist or something oh, oh you know john the massage therapist yeah. Yeah. yeah so he just like he just disappeared and i was like oh so we're gonna find out later that she's been doing all these things and forgetting about them so she killed john for being a jerk about like her pain and then that didn't happen i was like wait what about him i thought you yeah. killed him I, I forgot he was in there to be honest <laughs> it's I kind of yeah. Just, I meshed him and Mark together. <laughs> well, no, it was he was a massage therapist, and he was like one of the few things that actually helped. And then she was like, "Oh, I don't need a massage anymore." Well, he was doing like needle stuff with her and like running tests and all kinds of stuff. So I, I oh, that was I don't remember who else. that guy was exactly. John was the she was visiting John's house, and he had a wife, and she was, was like Mark. a massage therapist. No, Mark was in the uh, lab. There was someone before Mark, <laughs> and I can't remember his name. Damn it. They're all bleeding together. They're yeah. probably all white men, too. They're I want to say Luke things. because it follows the biblical theme. What? Is that a, oh, no. I, well, Mark yeah, and John. I was reading this. Matthew, well, Mark, Luke, Luke reading and John. This, I didn't think about, because I know someone brought up, like, the witches thing. I was over here like, is that the three wives, man? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Like, that's what I was thinking about. So I was like, oh. Okay. It's a Jesus yeah. metaphor. <laughs> There's like so many references in here. She even kept the Bible. <laughs> I was like, we love a fair queen. 
next will be Noah. <laughs> then she'll bring in Adam. Why? I was like, where are Luke and all the other people in here? <laughs> that, that's reserved for the sequel that ends well. <laughs> that's why she <laughs> ended it. <laughs> no, it's just like so crazy because Mark also reminded me of this is another specific reference that's just like, I just, I couldn't stop thinking about it. But you know, those like coaches or doctors or whatever, those guys who like, when they're, when they're supposed to be helping you, like when that one lady came in that he was casually talking to and being like super nice and friendly, like whatever. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like the scene where she's yeah. trying to get help for her pain and then this like really attractive woman comes or whatever and she's like, oh, she probably has something really simple. And all of a sudden he's like, hey girl, how are you? He reminds me of those guys that are like super plain faced until someone like really conventionally attractive shows up and then they're suddenly so nice. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you are a terrible, terrible professional. It's he was terrible. terrible. It, he was awful. Nice guys, TM. That's yeah. what the type is called. Yeah, like, it was just so weird for him to be like, well, you should have tried, well, now because I mixed him and that other guy. I don't know who was <laughs> telling her, you should have tried the exercises, you should have tried this, you should have tried that. They're all blending together so now. Bad. I really don't know who's who anymore. Yeah, because I, I literally thought everybody she went to for her pain was Mark. <laughs> <laughs> She just knows like multiple different <laughs> I, David. I think I want to say there was also a David. A David. Wait. Yeah, really? I, I think she said that there were multiple people at one point and she was like, and David said that he wouldn't uh operate on me because there was nothing to operate on because yeah. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. There was like seven doctors. Yeah. 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 She, like she was like, all my pain was rooted to my mom. She's like, I haven't talked to my mom in years. I was like, oh, yeah, fuck David for that. But which one is he yeah. again? Like, there were so many. I think that might be the the sur surgeon. Yeah, he was a surgeon, but she only saw him, like, the one time, and he wouldn't yeah. have on her. Then there was the other guy who operated on her, but then it didn't get better, and he was disappointed. And yeah. then there was the guy she was seeing who was constantly poking her with needles and telling her to do exercises that hurt. And, like, yeah. there's so many of you. I think that kind of illustrates too, like when people do have chronic pain issues, like you go and you visit so many different types of people yeah. and they all like put the blame on you when it's not your yeah. fault. Because didn't hurt this whole thing start because she was acting or like doing the thing theater people do. And she like, I don't know if they could call it acting, you know what I mean? Like performing. That's what, <laughs> that's what I meant. <laughs> So if you're a theater person and I said acting, but you call it performing, my bad. <laughs> but but um, they were doing the thing that theater people do. And she fell. And then she had that injury and that bad surgery that caused all the other pain issues. <laughs> so oh, like, okay, 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 okay. So yeah, so, wait, question, mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. If she fell and that was the original like start of all the pain, mm -hmm. why? This is where I get confused. <laughs> When she fell at the end, nothing happened. Yes. I'm fine. She was like, Whoa. Cat, cat. It's, oh, it's cat. like it's like it's like poetry. It rhymes. Y'all, this five star is in danger. It's like five poetry. Cat. There's cracks. Think about how beautifully no, poetic it is. She fell and then she fell again. But this know, time, like, it was a different result. Like Mona's literally saying, you just need one more fall. <laughs> <laughs> she said, "Fall again, bitch." Like literally. When I was thinking about that, because I was like, one, why did that first doctor with the bod surgery not get sued? Yes. I don't know. Because understand. then she would, like, girl, you could have pocketed that money and you wouldn't have to be a theater professor, at least for a few years. Yeah. Like, do you know how much you could get for suing somebody for something like that? A whole, a whole practice? I'd be like, give me my money now. <laughs> I'm out of here. Right. Yeah, just, like, like, I just felt so bad because she was going to all these different like professionals and they were all like, well, you need to do this exercise. She's like, well, it hurts. And I'm like, it hurts because you're healing. When they were like, pain is communication. Pain is communication. <laughs> the pain is communication. Yeah, and, then, and then Miranda communicated real well later on in the book. Oh, 
<laughs> like, yeah, this, yeah, they did talk about, like, as well as, right, they did, they talked about, like, a bunch of different doctor's opinions. That was so hard to read, Mike, because I feel like if that was me, I'd be so miserable. I mean, she is miserable. That's- she well yeah she was sitting there and she was like I'm trying not to cry and I was like you know cry it out it's yeah and I think that just also goes into like not everybody should be a doctor or a surgeon or a nurse few people like that's exactly that's like a profession that should be for very few people with specific amounts of emotional intelligence like being smart should not mean that oh you can be a doctor you can be a nurse you can be like whatever because I feel like a lot of times medical professionals are so insensitive like that's just crazy because I know I would cry yeah there's also I think Kat should be a surgeon (laughs) um Do you think I could ever cut someone up? You're racist. Just, just like, no, because but Kat would literally start skeleton, laughing. Kat. They'd be like, oxygen. And Kat's like, I. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, doing my job. She comes in with the knife. I thought this was my consultation, Doc. Surprise. <laughs> she shows up to class. They're like, yeah, so everybody should have read chapters one through ten. She's like, oop. Well, I'm not here. One nine. Let me finish real quick. <laughs> <laughs> right before the exam, she's like, yeah. "I'm waiting to check your one." <laughs> hey, look, we've all been there in college. We've all been there. Okay, this is right. not a cat okay. specific thing. The theater people know what's up. I finished with one minute, so I <laughs> fucking nailed this. You were doing trip. good, honestly. Uh, I went to three doctors who all disagree, and that was frustrating, even though I took you. Mm. Yeah, I can totally see that because I just feel like, especially if you do go to doctors and like their quick, quick solution is just giving you medicine and like nothing else, and they're like, they just give you whatever, and they're like, get well soon, get out of here, and you're like, wait. Yeah. And everyone, has, yeah, okay, you know what? My four star is solidifying. <laughs> I think it's good. A plot like, no, I loved plot. If I, even if I reduce my rating, it will be like a four or four and a half. Yeah. I just originally had been like, I love the the way it ended. And now I'm like, wait, I actually kind of wanted to know more. I was going to say, do we want to try to discuss this ending? Because this is. Yeah, let's That's discuss the so, ending. Uh, I just want to say before we start this, I I find a lot of the time I'm actually more accepting of open endings than a lot of my friends are. Um, but this wow. is a bad way to do an open ending because this was not good. Mm-hmm. I've always said like open endings are fine, but you got to have certain things be concrete. And then you can leave other things up to the imagination. This left, mm-hmm. this was like a, they put a dolly painting up. It's like, this is your, uh, it's your interpretation. I'm like, no, this is a novel. You need to tell me what happened. I'm not writing this. I'm not bringing my interpretation. You're telling me a story, and I want the re- ending, please. The way you both are looking at the book, trying to find I'm more in the ending. To, I'm trying to figure <laughs> out where I'm No, literally, I opened my book, and I was like, the golden drink. <laughs> <laughs> the freaking golden drink. Let's well, see, I'm not, I'm not even complaining about the golden drink. I want to know what the black box thing was. Yeah, I... There's, so, I have so many questions. Also, why was the baby named Ellie? Um, yeah, I think it was when, like to me, it was implied. I was waiting for this to be like, oh, she imagined all this when she fell off the stage. She, Ellie's actually her like real baby and she's coming out of like a coma or something, which would have been dumb, but like also would have been more concrete at least. So I guess it was, so was her it was because Ellie's wife. like a daughter to her. So she sees Ellie yeah. as her actual daughter I or something. I don't Ellie know. Ellie was going to be like some. Because of how obsessed she was with Ellie being Helen, like I felt like there might might have been something deeper there than just hating Brianna. So I, I kept expecting something. I kept being like, "Okay, is this like an alternate universe where Ellie is her and Ellie is about to fall and she has to save Ellie?" And then she started taking over and being like, "I'm Helen." And I was like, "Girl." Uh- you got what? me. I don't, I have no, I, yep. <laughs> All I know is that she drank a flower. 
Yeah. Break the yeah. Oh man. So okay. So bear with me on this one. I think mm-hmm. the implication was they were the three men were gonna try to like curse her again, but Ellie's mm-hmm. spell and the flower protected her, and that's oh, why they broke it, oh, and that's oh, why they oh, went oh, after oh, the oh, other girl oh, bar. Oh that's my interpretation of that scene. Oh, okay, okay, All right. You know what, Zach? I'm gonna give that to you. I'm gonna give that to she you. had the flowers in her hair, and then when she went to get like the stuff again, it like danced around her, and then she was fine. So that's yeah. my only possible way I could interpret that is that Ellie's spell protected her from the men, and that's We're why she didn't get that. jinxed again. Theoretically, if she had just taken the goddamn bath when the child gave her the flower, we could have avoided uh-huh. all of this shit. The book That's what I was thinking. Right here. Take a goddamn bath, bitch. <laughs> oh. Have a, light a little candle. Little First of all, baths are amazing. I'm just going to say that. So awesome. Everyone should take baths. Time to get ready. Dude, I can't. I hate baths. I feel like a boiled egg. <laughs> No, like I just get... sit in there and I'm like, oh no, I'm getting itchy. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> you gotta get you gotta get some bath salts and bath oils and soak and it smells no, nice. I have done it all. You're looking at somebody who's worked at Lush. I have done it all. <laughs> I have done... I always just feel like I'm being <laughs> marinated. <laughs> I'm like somebody's making some really good pozole right now, well, and it's me. Well, if you feel like you're being marinated, <laughs> just just be like, yes, I am the snack. I'm getting marinated, and just enjoy Not just yourself. A snack on the whole damn meal. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Literally. That's the that's the secret. No, I just feel like her. This entire book is just like I just really want to know what Mona was thinking. I don't think she'll tell you. I think she wants you. I think she wants you to interpret it. No, this kind of I book. want her to tell me what the what the point was. I want her to tell me. That's what I'm saying. Like I love the book. I really loved it. But what was the point? And that's the same way I feel about Bunny. Like anytime someone asks me about Bunny, I'm like, I love that book with my whole heart. Mm-hmm. It is evil. It is disastrous. It is toxic. <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> so i would say there's there's definitely themes she wanted you to take away of like believe people in chronic pain and be more supportive mm-hmm. don't wish your pain upon others just because you're in pain mm-hmm. um don't hate <laughs> other people <laughs> don't i'm trying yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to defend anything. the book you like and you're like is that really a theme of this book no, i like i, would, I, mean, I was yeah. nodding my head but i know if i was in her position i'd be like i wish all of you Oh, I would be, if I was in her position, I would line my students up. I'd be like, you don't know anything. Let me show you what it's like to be me. Well, there, <laughs> there was that brief conversation yeah. with Grace at the end, though, where she's like, I wish bad things on Brianna and I feel guilty. And she's like, well, you didn't do anything. She's like, yeah, but I wished it. So that's why I say, like, the don't wish your pain upon people. I do have to say that was a little bit out of character for me. Yeah, because that was weird. It, like, why do you feel bad? Chanel, I, this girl. I have no evidence of this, but I... I would put money on it. That was not in like Mona's draft, and she sent it to her editor or whatever. And, <laughs> and in big red text, it said, "Needs theme. Add two page <laughs> conversation <laughs> here." And so she typed it real fast, and she said, "Cool. Here's your check." Um, <laughs> okay, because yeah, it was so out of character for her to be like, "Why does we have a theme? Why can't it just be right vibes?" Like, Why can't it just be vibes? I'm not an editor. Why are you asking me? <laughs> you seem like you have the best grasp on this book <laughs> out of the four of us. Yeah. You, also, can we talk about the fact that, like, after everything that happened to Brianna, like, she was suddenly such a good actress? Like, you remember that? When no, I wanted to. Like, oh, she, like, she, she, like, was like, oh, Miranda, I'm so sorry I've been mean to you. I'm like, bitch, who the fuck is this? Right, like Ellie she, has possessed this girl. She did not she heal her. She possessed this girl. Right. And they were like, oh, we didn't expect the kiss between Ellie and Brianna or whatever. No, who was it? No, two people that weren't like... Yeah. No, Ellie and Brianna. Ellie and Brianna, Brianna, Brianna right? yeah. I was like, we're getting sapphic? I was like, <laughs> at, the end? <laughs> at the end? Yeah, I was like... Yeah, during the final performance. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, like, why at the end? Why couldn't we have had that the whole time? That's what I'm, I was like... You're telling me you're squeezing in June right here. 
Like, cue, uh, I put a spell on you by Neil Simone. <laughs> just be done with it. It was a wild, wild time. So. She's like, I, I healed her with a little bit extra. Yeah. <laughs> It was a crazy time. Okay. We're getting towards the end of the live show. So I thought, oop, not my laptop. Mm. Not my laptop, folks. So I thought what we could do is talk about the themes that we enjoy <laughs> in books. <laughs> As a general thing? Just, How- just a general? Yeah. Just a general? Yeah, like in books in general, because one of the things that I was curious about, because I didn't really read the summary of this book. I just, I actually did not read it at all. I just went off of the vibes that I kept hearing about. And I was like, I loved Bunny. So I have high hopes. I want to read this and I need a reason to. And I remember I had asked both um, Kat and Rachel, like, I have a few books you guys pick. <laughs> and both of you were like, well, I have All's Well on my TBR. And I was like, well, All's Well it is. So that's how we came here. So I'm really curious about what themes you typically enjoy in books. And also everyone in the comments, leave that as well. It doesn't have to be like relation to like dark academia. Also, this is like considered a fantasy, I guess, as well. I saw that on Storygraph and I was like, you were lying. No, Somebody lied. Not. You were lying. Somebody lied. There's <laughs> fantastical elements, but it's not fantasy. Yeah. So it's like, magical like, it on Storygraph. Yeah, magic it's like fantasy, literary fiction, something. And I was like, the fantasy is really shaky. Really, That's really shaky. Right. <laughs> it's not even there. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. Let's talk about our themes in books before we round out the live show. Theme number one, bitches being bitches. Mm. <laughs> With no consequences. Yes. <laughs> right. yes. I, yeah, mm-hmm. I like women's rage, for sure. That mm-hmm. That's a thing I like to see. Okay, you said it a lot nicer than I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember the what was it with that thriller that we had read? Uh, I know Kat's read it. I don't know if anyone else has the one with the professor who was like a serial killer. You know they what I'm talking about? Yes. yes, yes. They never learned. It was so good. Oh, oh it was so good. Oh, she so was good. everyone. Knew that. Here. If you don't read it, I'm for you. Mm. She said, you make me mad one time and it's over for you. <laughs> you didn't even have to do anything to her. And she's like, mm, you're on my list. Oh. Yeah. She's like, let me write your name down real quick. I see you <laughs> mean to women. <laughs> let me down. I'm going to read that. You don't it's hold the door so for good. one lady. It's and it's woman. also sapphic. So. And not bef- before like the last The entire time. book. The whole the book entire is book. pretty gay. And it's mwah. She was eating up the students. The hashtag sounds pretty gay. It's so good. It's literally. I was so pleasantly surprised by that book. That's a theme of the year. I loved her so much. She was just so great. Oh yeah, someone said, "Nah, good for her books or thrillers." Yes, love. Ten out of ten. Here we go. This is one of them. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. What are other examples? Because I my brain is empty. <laughs> no thoughts, oh, just vibes. Iron Widow. Okay. Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a shameless plug if I didn't write it? I'm just. Why? Yeah, aren't you doing that for your book, book club tonight, though? Editor? Yes. Yeah, I yeah. Do. If you listen to it on like four times speed, you can still. <laughs> <make it. laughs> yeah, can't get on it. <laughs> Don't punch me because I will. <laughs> I will make it. What is the last. Mm, um, Roman is Roman. Is that a is that a genre? Maybe that's a typo. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we're just dumb. Yeah, maybe we're just very simple. I mean, if you ask Mona Awad, she would probably say, like, yeah, y'all are stupid. Oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> Listen, I want a book that makes me feel like I know nothing. <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially like this. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I liked it so much because I've only been reading smut recently, so I really felt like I was getting out of my comfort zone here. I was, I was like, oh, I feel like this is a book that I could read in public and not like feel ashamed of. <laughs> oh, Gone Girl might be another example, actually. I mean, yes, I hate yeah. that book, but it is. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I did a smooth fast. I know, I know you did. I was like, we're all just attacking awful. Chanel today. <laughs> No, I, it's so weird because I feel like me and Kat usually have like very similar thoughts about at least the books that we like read together. We know that we've read. 
So that's funny. But I can 100% see why people would hate Gone Girl. And I fully agree. I don't know why it was a five star one. I fully agree. Because I, 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 I couldn't handle either of the characters. They were they're too. both terrible people. They're the worst. Literally. The word you're looking for is guilty pleasure. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. That's the word. Did y'all like for your... Have you guys read this one? I have I not. Oh, I read it and I'm not very good at, it's supposed to be like a humorous thriller. I'm not very good at like funny bookish con, funny media in general. This book was supposed to be funny? Wait, I this thought- book was supposed to be funny too, apparently. I did yeah. not cackle well, once. I laughed. I laughed. <laughs> I, I thought it was funny that she was mean, but I wasn't like, oh, I was hurting people. It I said like- darkly funny. <laughs> It's beautiful. So, I mean, if you like the darkly funny aspect of this book, then I would recommend For Your Own Good because that's also about a teacher who hates his students. Oh my God. And, he, like this. and the thing about, actually, this is good. This is a good way for me to spend the last couple of minutes for this live show because For Your Own Good, let me make sure that it's the right. <laughs> I'm going to just mark that as too weird. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, For Your Own Good, it's about this teacher at this like private school. Or something and he well it's a private school belmont academy and he really hates his students like if you wanted this woman to ruin lives you're gonna get it from that professor i mean from that teacher he really actively okay was killing (laughs) he was murdering he was destroying and the thing that killed me this man was like i'm doing it for your own good Ah! (laughs) he was like he was like i have to destroy their lives and the way the way the book ends actually the way the book ends i'm not gonna spoil my mouth fell open actually i was like wait wait i was like is this what is this who we are (laughs) (laughs) this is what we're doing so it was a good it was a good a good book. I'm gonna read that. But I, I didn't think it was funny, it. so I gave it like I think three or four stars. But the thriller aspect was there. I was like, wow. Did, so, didn't yeah. that author write that book about like a wife and husband? Yeah, 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 yeah. The um, the um, we you know something wife something my lovely wife. Yeah, that's the one. I Dude, never. I liked it. that book. I gotta read. I gotta. Get I liked it. it. It was it was pretty good. Also about two people who absolutely hate other people. <laughs> so I like <liked> it. <laughs> Samantha Downing is just like, I hate everyone. And- <laughs> we start a conversation. What's your favorite themes in books? Right. Theme. People <laughs> hating other people. Like we got past one theme and that was it. <laughs> but yeah, I highly recommend Samantha Downing books. Oh my God. This is the same author of He Started It. A book that I think I gave five stars. Wow. Look at that. Thriving. <laughs> and that's also a book about a bunch of people who hate each other, but they're family members. Bye. Ooh, <laughs> on a road fun. trip. Okay. On a road trip to get an inheritance from a grandparent that they also hate. All right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Samantha Downing is just like All hatred. Right. Books full of hatred. Um, okay, so Isabella explained it's coming of age stories. Okay, cool. Oh, oh, I can't. I've uh, never heard of that. Do we read? Right. No, we don't. <laughs> no. I don't. Um, <laughs> I, before and I loved it. Oh, I, I did read that this year. Yeah. I did read that. Yeah. I thought I, it was, I don't know that it was, yeah, it wasn't laugh out loud funny, but it's just the whole idea of like a book in the form of an Ikea catalog was actually yeah. like, kind of fun. It looks interesting from what I've seen. Uh, it's it's Ooh. interesting. I didn't love everything that book did, but I definitely enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It's one of those like, it's one of those like, I like it, but it's flawed kind of books where it's like, oh, I can yeah. see people like really disliking this, but like I had fun. I yeah. stopped reading Grady Hendrix after. um Southern Book Club. Oh, geez. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I DNF'd that. Don't go back. I it's not. Because I just I was just like I'm very bored. People said this was going to be a good time, and it's it's boring. I, we, we we read it. We read it together. Both of us were just like, "What the fuck are we doing?" Right. I my brain. <laughs> I my didn't brain. read that one, but I read the final girls one by him. Mm. No. no. Oh. Oh no. no. Dang. It's not. It just. It was so unnecessarily long. <gasps> and not fun. Southern at all. Book Club. 
that will and also i've read like it this was years ago but i read the my best friend's friend's exorcism one. Oh, i know that book would make me bored I, I, remember like one thing. I don't it was so long and for what i don't remember anything the cover is so cool but every time mm-hmm. someone talks about that book i'm like i know i will be bored so i'll just bored. Sure have it bored oh. he should write short stories i think he, he could should short really novellas yeah, five star. Well, horror store is like 240 pages, but half the page is blank because it's supposed to be like an IKEA catalog. <laughs> Look, I read horror store in a day, and if I can read it in a day, it's short <laughs> because I am not fast. I need my books to be like if I'm gonna physically sit down and read it with my eyes, I need it to be like 120 tops. Like I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you need a magazine. <laughs> like, there, look, horror stories two hundred forty pages, but there's pictures. The font's big, and half of it I half do of like, it is empty. I just have y'all heard of um, that TikTok book that's like going viral right now, the Atlas Six or whatever. Dude, I literally I, bought that months ago. I bought it yesterday. It. There's oh pictures in it. I was yes. like. Look at us, four grown and adults, all being like, there's pictures. <laughs> you know what? Picture books are highly underrated for old people. <laughs> Not old people. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's the I early 20s. for me. <laughs> I was Actually, like, Rachel, you're 21. What are you talking about? <laughs> yep. Um, I I'm think we're all for eight years. in our early 20s. <laughs> I'm basically in the grave, okay? It's, I, yeah. Old is a state of mind, note. and Kat and I have it. <laughs> old, if old is a state of mind, I'm on death. It's over for me. I don't need to make it past the age I'm at. I'm good. <laughs> oh, dark turn. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Okay. Thank you so much for everyone. <laughs> We're going to end on that note. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I had no clue what this live show was going to be, but it was a great time. Mm-hmm. It was a housing success. Yeah. <laughs> I consider this an A++. If I was a professor, that's what <laughs> I would <laughs> give you all. <laughs> Thanks oh, for that. <laughs> yeah. No, you're welcome. Again, thank you to everyone for joining us and for cackling. Thank you. <laughs> we love that. Hearts here and everywhere. Um, don't forget this month we're reading Tokyo Ever After. Next month we're reading She Who Became the Sun. Um, do you guys have anything you want to say last, not last words, uh, <laughs> any announcements? I know Rachel, you have a book club. So do you want to like, talk about what you're reading this month in case anybody wants to join you? Sure. Uh, yeah. So tonight we're talking about Iron Widow, which is mm-hmm. phenomenal. Uh, mm-hmm. this month we're reading Firekeeper's <laughs> Daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're reading Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Boulay. Uh, I don't know when the live show is. I should probably find that out. Um, but yep, it's it's a great book. It's a thriller. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Cool. All right. I just want to say to any, anyone doing NaNoWriMo, good luck. I hope you're doing yes, well. I, I was going to say, I heard Rachel's doing well. I heard she's killing oh, the game. Oh, you're doing yes. it. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. Your power. Mm-hmm. Your power. I couldn't. You're doing Good great, sweetie. Doing that. <laughs> You're succeeding. Oh my gosh. Hello, Lala. Hi. You. Hi. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thanks again for joining us. I hope you had as many laughs as we did throughout this experience. <laughs> I will see you <laughs> in the next live show. And you will probably, oh, not MacBook is about to die. Um, I will see you all in the next live show. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. Bye.